What's up everybody? Let's imagine that we had a little pan of water here. So let's say we have a little pan of water to fill it up. And we're going to take a test tube. Let's fill our test tube up with water. We're going to invert our test tube here, right on top. Fill it up with water. Put our thumb over it and just essentially invert it here and see what happens. So you hopefully you've done this before and what you will notice is that nothing happens. It just kind of stays there, right? So let's just say for argument's sake that this pressure right here and this pressure right here are equal. So P1 equals P2, right? That would be equilibrium. None of the water would come out. That would make sense. So P1, clearly is one atmosphere, right? P1 is just going to be uh, one ATM. Uh, P2, now notice there's atmosphere up here pushing down on the test tube, but it's not inside the test tube, right? Inside the test tube, in fact, there is no atmospheric pressure. It's like the test tube is blocking the atmosphere or taking the weight of the atmosphere on top of it. So inside, all you have is this water, right? The pressure due to this water. So we'll write that as rho g h of the water. So let's imagine we don't know what the height of this is. Let's say we're going to calculate if this these two pressures are equal, let's go ahead and calculate what that height would be. So one atmosphere we know is 1.013 pascals, 10 to the fifth, and we know water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Little g is little g. And we have h, so we're going to solve for h. And what you get when you do the math here is you get an h of 10.3 meters. Which means if this is in exact, if these two are exactly equal to each other, then the height of this test tube would be over 10 meters tall. Well, that doesn't make sense, right? There's no test tube that's the size of a three-story building. Or maybe there is. I'm sure at some science museum somewhere they've actually done this. But in this case, there isn't, which means the pressure down here, let's see, this P2 is actually lower than the atmospheric pressure. So the atmosphere is actually pushing up on this. There's a net upward pressure pushing upwards on the water here. So let's imagine instead though we have a different device. So the reason it's so tall, if you can see, if even if you just kind of look at the math here, you can see that um, this density, 1000, is kind of low. If we choose some kind of fluid with a higher density, then that would mean our height could be smaller. So let's say instead of using water, we use a high density substance such as mercury. So why don't we fill up this little tube and we're going to seal up the top here and let's fill this tube up say with some mercury. Okay, so the screen is going to be mercury. We're going to fill it all up here, right? So what you can see here, so this is going to be some level, let's just call this, again we'll call this H. Right here inside, this is going to be essentially a vacuum. Okay, which again would mean that there's no pressure there at all. And again, we'll say, okay, this on the outside is going to be one atmosphere. Now here, clearly you can see, since I kind of lowered this level, that these two do need to be in equilibrium. So this should be one atmospheric pressure as well. Now if this pressure on the outside went up, then that means this pressure would go up, would push up, which means the liquid on the inside, the fluid on the inside would also have to go up. Right? So this gives us a method of actually measuring the pressure on the outside. So if the pressure slightly goes up, this level goes up. If the pressure slightly goes down, then this pressure is going to, this, uh, this side's going to go down. So let's go ahead and calculate H for mercury because it's actually a number that's used quite often. So we just do the same kind of calculation. We'll just say, okay, one atmosphere, 0 0.013 times 10 to the fifth pascals equals, again, we're going to use rho of mercury here. So I'm going to look this up. Rho of mercury is 13,600. So we're going to go 13,600. OK, 
Okay, again, kilogram meters cubed and 9.8. And let's find the H. So this would be if it was a nice at sea level, 1.013, what would be the height of this? Well, it turns out you get 7, sorry, 0 0.760 meters. And oftentimes we write this as 760 millimeters. In fact, this has actually become, so they might say 760 millimeters of mercury. This is actually a unit of pressure that's used oftentimes. And this is called a tor. Perhaps you heard in chemistry they use that many times. So one tor is essentially 760 millimeters of mercury, which would be the atmospheric pressure. That would be how much, what the height of this mercury would be in this device that we call a barometer. And again, the purpose of this is to measure what it's like, the pressure is like on the outside. Pressure goes up, the level, the height of the mercury goes up, and if the pressure goes down, same thing, the height of this would go down. So let me just leave you with one last thing to think about, and we'll talk about this in class a little bit, but think about a straw. We've all used straws before. We've all probably even played around with straws before. So what I want you to do is think about how do straws work? And not just in the simple drinking your liquid, but if you were to mess around with the straw. So, you know, stick your finger over it, maybe drink, drink it up a little bit halfway, see what happens. Put your finger over it, see what happens. So do that tonight. That's your little mini homework assignment. And then try to figure out about the physics, what's going on. And we'll talk about it tomorrow.